What's up, family? It's your man, Daryl Arnold II. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to drop this word. But before I do, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time to speak your truth. And I just pray that I'm led by your spirit and that you get the glory. And I thank you for uh, saturating me with your presence and, your, and just your love, God. And I pray that your love would permeate this video and that everybody who hears this would feel your presence and know that you are a loving God, a merciful God, a kind God, and a God that loves your creation and a God that wants to have relationship and fellowship with your creation. And um, I pray that any thoughts that people may have towards you that aren't true, that you would dispel that and let them see who you really are so that they can understand their need for you, Father. Um, I pray that your love would just continue to overwhelm my life, but also those who hear this so that they feel your presence more and more and know that you are our source. You are our savior. You are who we truly need, Father. I thank you in advance and I give you all the glory. Holy Spirit, you are invited to come into this session and flow as you see fit. I thank you for the movement that you bring, the challenge, the power that you bring, the change and transformation that you bring. Um, Jesus, I thank you for doing what you did which allowed me to be in the family in the first place, coming to die on the cross and rise again. So I give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name, amen. What's good, family? I just wanted to come on here, um, <clears throat> congested again. I figured out what that was. Um, it wasn't just allergies. Um, the other day I was going to the gym and often I wear a beanie when I go work out because I don't know, but some gyms, they like to have the AC on all the time and it'd be cold and I'd be on that treadmill like running and I'd be like sweating beads and I am covered up, but like, you know, you under that cold air, you'd be congested. And I talked to the manager and I was like, hey, can y'all turn this heat up? So I'm gonna find out when I go again, cause they said they would uh, possibly do that. Cause I'm like, yeah, I'm tired of getting sick when I work out, but um, I'm getting better. But yeah, I get tired of this congestion stuff. Um, but I wanted to uh, do two things. One, I wanted to bring up the fact that oftentimes we can be hardest on ourselves and harder on ourselves than God ever would be. Uh, we like to, I think the world we live in today, we have a very interesting society. On the one hand, we can be extremely condemning and critical of ourselves or others. <clears throat> and on the other hand, we can be extremely um, passive on areas of accountability and not holding ourselves and others accountable. It's a very interesting viewpoint because accountability is necessary, but over criticism is not because that's condemnation. We can have constructive feedback because we do need those moments of constructive criticism here and there. But when we overly do it, we um, we end up breaking. Uh, we could break our spirits or we could tear ourselves down or we can lose a sense of hope. It's kind of like when you see a flower and you drop a bowling ball on it, it's going to crush the flower. But when you prune the flower by cutting it in certain areas, though it's a, a tiny wound, it allows the flower to grow in its proper way. And so I think there's a need for a number of things. But when we do certain things in excess, it can be very uh, counterproductive. And so I wanted to read from Ecclesiastes chapter seven, uh, verse, where is it? Verse 16, it says, do not be overly righteous, nor be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Do not be overly wicked, nor be foolish. Why should you die before your time? Um, it is good that you grasp this and also not remove your hand from the other for he who fears God will escape them all. And I wanted to emphasize how sometimes we're so hard on ourselves. We try to be perfect. We try to do everything right. And you don't realize we need grace. None of us were called to do everything right. And when we try to go in that direction, we are, we actually are tearing ourselves down, wearing ourselves out. Um, and just sometimes burning away our joy and God didn't call us to do that. In fact, the Bible is very clear that his grace is sufficient for us. God loves us. And I think our viewpoint of that critical spirit, that critical eye that we have towards ourselves, we sometimes think God looks at, it like, looks at us like that. And we judge ourselves and tear ourselves down. And I just want to encourage you today to know that God loves you. Even when you make mistakes, he loves you. So one thing I hope you learn from this is to show yourself some grace and some mercy, because that's what he has for you. And so I wanted to sing an excerpt <coughs> Excuse me, of this song by Donnie McClurkin. Um, bear with me. Let me get it right. <coughs> Excuse me. It's called Great Is Your Mercy. I just sing a bit of it. Great is your mercy towards me, your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see. Great is your grace forever faithful towards me always providing for me 
your tender mercy I see day after day. Great is your mercy towards me, your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercy I see, great is your grace. Ooh, great is his mercy towards you, his loving kindness towards you. His tender mercies you see day after day. Ooh, 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 forever faithful toward you, always providing for you. His tender mercies you should see. Great is his grace. Ooh, 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 ooh. I just want to encourage y'all today that God loves you and to not beat yourself up, but to understand that you are his workmanship. And the Bible says we write, the righteous man falls down seven times, but he gets back up. I'm going to read one more scripture to y'all or a couple. I say one more. I'm a preacher. Sometimes I'll be adding. I'm going to go to Romans 7 and Romans 8 with the intent of those being the last two scriptures. I have another one in mind, but I remember where it was. Um, hang on. There we go. Romans 7. I, hope, I know this is going to help somebody because it, it helps me. Um, Romans 7, here we go. <clears throat> or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. Hang on, let me go further. That's not the part I want to say. Um, okay, verse 14. Uh, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, basically what I want to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But the sin, but it is the sin that dwells. But it is, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. And he goes, now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And then chapter eight, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him is of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. I just wanted to emphasize this a little longer, but I wanted to just point out, like Romans 7 says, the good I want to do, I don't do. The bad I don't want to do, I keep doing. And it's because there's a war within, there's a sin nature within us. But thankfully, when you know Jesus and you have his spirit, when you walk according to the spirit, you can fight this and crucify your flesh. So I hope this word encouraged you. 
Uh, this is Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8. Uh, that's the New King James Version. Hopefully it made sense to some of y'all. And if it didn't, feel free to tag me with some questions and I'll explain it the best I can. But um, before I close, if there's anybody here who does not have a relationship with the Lord, I want to stress the importance of that. And like I said, I'm a preacher, so I'm going to get one more verse. And this happens to be in the same, uh, uh, the same book, Romans 10, verse 9. And it says, uh, <clears throat> oh, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scriptures say, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's pretty much what salvation is, what I tell you all each day. Because we are not perfect individuals. God loves us. John 3.16 says he loved us so much that he sent his son into the world to die for our sins. And if we believe in him, we shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so <clears throat> before I close, if you want to have everlasting life with Jesus so that when you die, you're headed to heaven, not headed to the other place, hell. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, <clears throat> I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And if you did that, the Spirit of God is now in you as we read and you are his. And the name, your name is written in the book of life and there is a celebration in heaven by angels because you crossed over from death to life. Um, if you don't know Jesus, get to know him because when you die, if you don't have fellowship with Jesus, you're not getting to heaven. And he doesn't want that. He said, it's not my will that man should perish. So my name is Daryl II. I'm on YouTube. I am on uh, Instagram and I'm on Facebook. And if there's anything I can pray that you get out of this message is that great is his mercy towards you. Great is his mercy towards you. His loving kindness towards you, his tender mercies you see day after day, forever faithful towards you, always providing for you. His tender mercies you see, great is his grace, woo, 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 woo. That's Donnie McClurkin, and that is on, uh, that's called Great is His Mercy. Great is your mercy. All right, y'all, love y'all. Peace. I'm out.